I'm Scott Holmes. I'm Matt Metzger. And you're listening to Ground Etc. This season, we're going to be talking all things infield grooming. From routine maintenance to leading groundskeeping teams to full serious renovation work, we talk to experts of the field on the ground, the work, etc. Et all right. In this episode, we have Leah Winthrow coming in. Uh, the woman has achieved a lot in her life. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's, she's got a heck of a story. A, oh, heck of a story. And uh, I, I think the, the audience, whether you're watching or listening, is going to really enjoy the interview with her. And uh, in this particular interview, we are talking about how to get started. Yeah. You know, how to get how to get your feet wet. Take that first step onto the field. I mean, I don't know if you're a, a young kid, if you're a junior high kid, a high school kid, college kid. You could be 45 and want to start a new career. How do you get in? To sports turf yeah. management. Well, I mean, because we heard Taylor talk about how he got started yeah. when he was eight years old. Uh, but if if you've come to love the ground and you develop a passion for the ground and you want to make this your career, you want to spend your life working on fields and gradually nicer and nicer fields yeah. <laughs> and better and better fields and, and kind of broader domains uh, with more bright lights, then how do you move in that direction? And yeah. Leah's definitely paved a path. She's going to be great. But obviously, we don't have Leah here today. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Leah. That's not Leah. <laughs> no, that's Brandon Holmes. And Brandon is with us because uh, he is new to a new division with an API. Yeah, speaking of getting started, right? Yeah. So whereas Leah is going to talk about getting started in, in her industry, Brandon, you're just getting started here on the ABI Force team. Just getting started. <laughs> okay, but so I, you're going to tell us everything very, we need yeah. to know, right? But, but oh, I, I got full spec sheet. I yep. got to address the elephant in the room. Yeah. We are related. What? Yes. I know. I have his good looks. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> We're going to skip past this real call. fast. I, I, I wanted to say he was my brother, but I don't think anybody's going to buy that. It's <laughs> insulting. No, this is my son. And and, and Brandon, um, you know, you've not been with ABI very long. You came no. in and purchasing a couple of years ago. Sure. And you're 30. Oh, you will be 30. Yes. In an, this, is, this, is a, this is a dad check right yeah, here. Yeah, well, yeah. In, in, in a couple of months, you're going to be 30. So you didn't just come out of high school and work for ABI. You have your own history. You have your Correct. own work story. You've you created your own career. And we, and we brought you in. I didn't have anything to do with it, but we brought you in a couple of years ago. And now yeah. you've switched over, you know, to the force mm -hmm. uh, team and and working with uh, Sports Turf. But I I am interested a little bit to hear. I mean, you you know, I was I started with ABI in 99 with Kevin. Oh, yeah. And so you were six. five, six, something like that. So yep. you watched ABI from the beginning to the end. Can you can you tell me what you've seen? I mean, you weren't a part of ABI yeah. and then all of a sudden you stepped into two years ago and you went, holy crap, I yeah. didn't realize we'd done that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been very eye opening. Um, like you said, I was six when when I first saw my first TR3. Um, I remember I have vivid memories of sitting on a flatbed trailer in the dark, listening to my dad curse at ratchet straps. <laughs> now, wait a minute. We weren't supposed to tell that story. We trusted him to drive truck and trailer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, it was just me. It was me and Kevin. <laughs> the, the fact that we're still around is shocking. It is. Yeah. So, I mean, going from watching him, you know, strap one up, take it out and sell it, yeah. to walking through the warehouse, watching everything that's going out the door yeah, is just, it uh, was very eye opening. Because Scott, in the beginning, when you were first selling TR3s, yeah. uh, how many TR3s would you sell in a given month? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, five, Ballpark it. But five. But I, I do know what our first annual, our first full year of a business, I knew what our gross, our gross sales were. It's $350,000. Right on in first year and say five or so a month. And so now we've got five units a month in 99 and we're up to what, 5,300 units in the year? Yeah. That's yeah. It's yeah. a we're, wild we're, increase. We're, we're a much bigger company. But you know, one story about Brandon, then we'll get to the, we'll get to the topic yeah. at the end. But I always knew and I've always told him that sales is where he needed to be. Yeah. Like, I've got a picture of this kid at age 10. Right. With a cowboy hat on, cowboy booth. He's in the booth at Congress. No, uh, Equine Affair over in Ohio. Yeah. And my father's work in the booth because, you know, it's a family business at sure. that point. And my dad says, Scott, Brandon just sold the first rascal. So this couple comes there up. There you go. This couple comes up. Did you get any commission on that? Uh, he got lunch. <laughs> they fed me that day. Yeah. 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 Man, man, growing up on the farm, I heard that same line. Like, yeah. do we get an allowance? No, you get a place to sleep. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, Brandon's been around a long time. We've got him in the force division. Ask him anything you want. All right, you ready? In oh, position. Ready. <laughs> yeah. what's it, but really, though, what's, the, what's it like jumping over? I mean, the um, the... Did you grow up playing ball at all? Like little league guy? Yes, actually. I played little league and uh, some travel. 
Got it. And so then jumping into, so from a player as a young kid, jumping into working with uh, professional groundskeepers, mm-hmm. professionals who work with uh, sports surfs all over the country. Sure. What's it been like in these first couple of conversations? Um, very humbling. Yeah. <laughs> very humbling. Didn't realize how naive I was about the game of baseball. Yeah. So like I said, I played in Little League probably just up until high school. Yeah. And my baseball experience was actually really bad. It was, it was terrible. Yeah. Oh, no. So the way our little league was set up is we were drafted. So each coach would draft each player. Interesting. Yes. And the same coach drafted me every single year. And he was not a very good coach. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And we lost I every can, single I, game. Oh, oh I no. Can, I can validate the quality of the coach at that point. Oh, oh no. Yeah. yeah. Bombers. And every That's year. tough. It was. It was because I loved the game so much. Yeah. And I kept, I would always tell my dad. He's like, do you want to play this year? I'm like, yes, I just don't want to play on this team. Yeah. He's like, well. Got drafted. He's like, if if you get picked, you commit. Wow. You play the entire season. Well, and so for you to still want to play the game, even after a number of years of it not being quite the experience that you wanted to be. Correct. That's some commitment, man. Yeah. And then I played travel ball as well. Got it. A little bit. So I've always had a love for the game. Right on. So love for sports. I mean, you're a football player, golfer, lacrosse player. I mean, athletics is a big part of our family. So what are some, do you, after these first kind of couple of months of conversations as you, I mean, just what you were at SFMA not so long ago, right? Uh, So that's the experience there and shaking hands with some professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, What are some things that give us a couple of things you've learned right out the gate? Maybe for somebody who's brand new listening to this going, man, we found this podcast because, (laughs) because we want to learn too. Yeah. So the first thing that I realized is ball fields they are their art yeah and i didn't realize that um i was spoken i spoke to a gentleman he came in and was talking about his base uh, foundation yeah and he recently had a player take a, a bad bounce to the face Yeesh. and i just saw in his eyes he took that personally yeah very personally you see that on tv and you're just like um like maybe maybe the player could have done something better but there's somebody that's on the sidelines. They're taking responsibility for it. And it hits them hard. Yeah. Very yeah. hard. And he, he looked at me and said, that'll never happen again. Yeah. yeah. So we went out with uh, USA Softball. Yeah. One of the nights that we were we were at the show. And he probably showed me 500 videos of his field. <laughs> he was so proud yeah. of, of his field and what he was able to do. Yeah. So I didn't realize, I mean, I, I knew that the force was one of the best infield groomers on the market. Yeah. I didn't realize what it what it what it did for the groundskeeper yeah. and the grounds crew. And and what's needed. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just gives them the ability to to show off their talent. Sure. I mean, they can they can do things with that that they can't do with anything else. Yeah. And them having that ability really makes them stand out. And it, and, they, and they just love it. The people at the show they just ranted and raved. Right on. Every single customer. Yeah, that's great. So coming into coming into this industry again as someone who is starting out and, and familiarizing yourself with the whole landscape and the whole vocabulary and and the work and the intentionality and the art behind mm-hmm. the ground maintenance. Uh, what are some of your what are some of your goals for learning? Like what are you looking at first? What are you trying to learn first in order to feel like you've really got a grip on uh, being someone who can assist groundkeepers? Sure, sure. So I started a couple months ago. Yeah. And when I started, I literally knew nothing. <laughs> I, I didn't know what the hand rake was used for, what the brooms, I didn't know what conditioner was. Yeah. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So I had to start off and it pretty much just YouTube's, YouTube videos um, <laughs> over and over on repeat <laughs> just to grasp the basic fundamentals yeah. of groundskeeping yeah right on what are you looking forward to most as you get into this and i know you've already had the sfma experience uh, and you're gonna be hit the road uh mm-hmm. some more here going into going into warmer weather in the north and as seasons pick up around the country um what's some what's some highlights what's some things that are on your calendar that you're excited about um not sure yeah i'm not sure honestly i mean it's still so new i'm just kind of Writing it out, yeah, just letting it take me wherever to go. Right. Uh, I imagine you're getting an education like a, a hose, uh, taking yeah. a drink with a faucet hose. That's yeah. probably how you're feeling right yeah. now because yeah. I I know you're in heavy training on the machine itself, mm-hmm. let alone the industry. Because yeah. one thing we've done at ABI, and this has been from from day one, my philosophy was anybody who was going to promote our equipment had to be an expert in the field, mm-hmm. not sure. just with the equipment. Yeah, correct. 
So, I mean, I, you know, there were years, I'm, man, I'm telling you, there were years where we would hire salespeople and it was a year of training before yep. they could pick up the phone. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they could learn our equipment in three days, but it takes a long time to learn the industry. <clears throat> so, I know that you're getting, you're, you're just getting drowned oh, in yeah. landscape contracting and sports turf field mm -hmm. maintenance, let alone the equipment. Yeah. But knowledge is critical to a good foundation. Yeah. yeah. It, it absolutely is. You betcha. So, the... From your time again like the most recent exposure we had a, a chance to talk with a lot of groundskeeping professionals all at once was that sfma sure. uh, what are some what are some things that people are looking for what are some things that people are are hoping that uh problems that we can help solve a lot of municipalities and cities they their baseball fields were put in a long time ago yeah i spoke to a guy and he had 25 fields he was managing 25 30 fields wow. and he said they were put in so long ago that the root issues I mean, he just, he needed to take everything out and laser the base from the ground up. Yeah. So some full renovation. We're actually talking with Lee about that soon too. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And so the force has the potential, it has the capability of offering that to him as well as just the normal everyday maintenance. Sure. Yeah. So he was really excited about that because he was looking for both, but both weren't in the budget. Yeah. And so with the force, he was able to get what he needed today and then add on to it later. That's great. Well, and that's really interesting for people who, if, I mean, I know we're talking again, like you're jumping into the industry brand new. Mm -hmm. If you've got, uh, if any listener out there is a groundskeeper who's fairly new to the role and they're learning as well, Correct. not only are they learning the, the basics and how do you just mm -hmm. maintain, but what if the people who are learning are working on fields that are how many decades old? Yeah. Right. So there's so much to learn, not only like, hey, just keeping up with the day to day, but mm -hmm. what if you've got an aging field as opposed to a brand new yeah. field? Or what if you're in a situation where you need to install a field and you've never done that before? Yeah. So it it can feel like a like a fire hose sometimes. It can. Yep. No doubt. Yeah. Well, Brandon, we're thrilled that you were able to come in and say hi to us as someone who's just starting out is going to talk to yeah. as we talked to Lee about just starting out. So yeah, it's a good segue into into Leah's yeah. interview. Well, and congrats on jumping onto the force team. Excited to have you on here and good luck on the journey. Yeah, thanks Thank for you. being here. It was a pleasure. Leah, welcome for, welcome. <laughs> it's like that. Yeah. Come like, on. Blooper, right away. <laughs> My prepositions are off today. All right. Words are hard. <laughs> words yeah, words are hard. <laughs> Thank you. Words are hard. At least yeah. she's sympathetic. Right. No other love anywhere else in this room. Not a bit. All right. <laughs> Leah, thanks so much for joining us. Glad to have you here on the show. Happy to be here. Excited to have you. Yeah. So you have a long history in sports turf management. So you uh, born and raised in Nevada, right? Yes, sir. And the North Dakota State University. Oh, wait a minute. Sir. Don't call him oh, sir. No, this is for rough God's already. Sake. We're getting tough. <laughs> so, so NDSU. We got to take that right now. Go ahead. <laughs> in sports turf grass management. Yes. And then some internships, both with the Brewers and then back over in Nevada. And now you are the head groundskeeper there. Yes. Goodness, what a journey. It was, I, you say a long history, but I, like I literally feel like I've been here for like five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But where did it get started? I mean, so no one just like goes into this uh, and yeah. like, oh, I'm like, I'm an accountant and now I'm studying finance and now like, well, I guess I'll be a groundskeeper. I mean, how do you so just jump into where's this? Where's the love of the field come from? Like most people, you just stumble upon it. Mm -hmm. um, so I was touring North Dakota State. Uh, my mom's side of the family is all in Fargo. So we okay. were just visiting them for the summer and junior year of high school is when you start touring different colleges and stuff. So mm -hmm. we were up there for the summer and uh, was touring North Dakota State for their engineering department. They have a really big engineering department. And I saw sports turf management on their majors list. And I was like, that's kind of interesting and different. I was like, I like sports. I like being outside. Like we're here. Let's just hear what they have to say. So yeah. we met with the department head who ends up being my advisor. Great guy. Just kind of laid out all the different avenues you could go. You can do golf course, you can do sports fields, you could do landscape, you can do right research and development. Like, yeah. There are so many different opportunities that like when you first see that title, you don't think of all those things. Yep. And then I went back to school senior year, took calculus, realized engineering was not going to be an option. <laughs> <laughs> real quick. It gets all of us. Honestly, calculus yeah, is I like, that's a kill so shot. I was good at math. I was in all the advanced math classes. I like math was my jam. And then calculus is not math. <laughs> not math at all. You know, all of my degrees have the very minimal amount of math. And it was on purpose. You know, like once the there's more letters than numbers on the page, I'm like, no, this is yeah. Yeah. flying. Yeah. Calculus made no sense. And so I was like, well, now I need a backup plan because I was like engineering, engineering, engineering. Uh, right. yeah. And then I had... Thank goodness I took that time and went and met with that guy. And I was like, okay, like I could probably see myself doing something like that. I still wasn't sure. Didn't know if I wanted to move all the way from Nevada to North Dakota. 
for this degree. So I reached out to the Diamondbacks. We were spring break my senior year. We were in Arizona visiting yeah. my grandparents. And I literally just went to the Arizona Diamondbacks questions and comments page on their website. Yeah. No way. And it was just like, I'm a senior in high school looking at getting into this. I don't know if I want to. Can I shadow your groundskeeper? I had so many questions that I needed sure. to ask like an industry professional. And wow. What a so, great idea. I so just smart. sent it. I was just like, I, it, the worst they can say is no right. or they don't respond. Like, right. Right. No harm, no loss. Like, right. yeah. So I just tried it. And then within an hour or two, I had a response and Grant had me out for two days. I worked a non-game day and a game day. And my dad drove me in every day and dropped me off. No way. He just stood in right field of Chase Field where their yeah. shop is. And you just like overlooked the field, overlooked the stadium. And you're like, wow, when I come to work every day, like this is where I would work. This is my office. Wow. And like I was exhausted. It's my spring break. I should be <laughs> relaxing and I'm washing wall pads. And <laughs> So you weren't in Florida with your friends. You no. were working a field. I was working. Oh, and wow. It didn't matter how tired I was when I got home. I wanted to go back. Wow. And that's when I knew I was like, okay. This you know, is something I, I'd be good at. Yeah, not to tie this, well, I guess to tie this back, you know, we did an interview with Chuck White. I don't know if you know who Chuck is, but anyway, we did an interview with Chuck and, you know, he talked about passion. Yeah. About the need. If you're going to be in this business, you yeah. got to have the passion because yeah. it's brutal. It's it hard. I'm, I'm anxious to ask questions when, about when how such hard a, it is. But. Such a catalyst moment too, right? For like that point, you knew right where you're standing. You could probably yeah. go right back to that same spot mm -hmm. and take a look at the view. And like, yep, this is what did it for me. Yeah. Uh, just just to have the Diamondbacks and Grant. I don't know if you know who Grant Trembeath is. He's no. the head for the Diamondbacks, has been for years. Um, take a chance on an 18-year-old girl who yeah. wanted to get into it and took the time to show me everything and all of his assistants who I still am in contact with to, to, today. And I mean, that experience alone, if I didn't have that, I probably wouldn't be here. Yeah. Because that's something that like locks it in for you. And then you pack up all your stuff from Gardnerville, Nevada to Fargo, North Dakota. Like that's a big change. You need something big to get you to do that. No so. kidding. I mean, now, had you climate, ever everything. Yeah. yeah. Big change all the way around. Had you ever worked on fields before that time? I mean, like sports growing up, like what was your, what was your experience with being on a baseball field before that, that two day shadow? Zero. None. Okay. I, I, I assumed you were a softball no, player. I actually have zero hand eye coordination. Okay. <laughs> I, I played soccer for all of my life. So you have foot eye hand coordination. Yes. Uh, when, uh, foot coordination. When they foot, take foot. <laughs> I see where you're going. You tried hard. I, I like tried it. hard. I, I gave it my best effort. <laughs> Words are hard, like she said Words earlier. Are hard. Words are hard. Yeah. But when you take the hands out of the equation, when it's literally against the rules to use your hands, I was like, that sport <laughs> is for me. I, I can do, do that, that one. So I can do that. I played soccer my whole life. Um, obviously played on a lot of park and rec fields, played on some nicer uh, high school fields, mm -hmm. but never been on a baseball field until that moment. Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. And have not turned back. Yeah, no doubt. So then that two-day experience in Arizona is what uh, convinced you that that degree, uh, flying all the way to North Dakota and spending time there for a couple of years. I noticed you had some internships during that time. So when uh, was the first kind of longer period of time going from that two-day shadowing? When was your first experience to have uh, a longer chunk of time working on a field? So I got my first internship uh, the summer after my freshman year of college. So I came home home yeah. Yeah. with the Reno Aces and worked under their head, first head groundskeeper, Eric Blanton, who was great, um, learned a ton, really got thrown into the deep end on that one. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I still loved it every day. Um, then went back to school sophomore year. Summer after my sophomore year, I got the internship with the Milwaukee Brewers, which was a huge experience for sure. me. Um, completely different than minor league baseball. Crew yeah. size doubles, event load doubles, everything is- Budget doubles, I'm sure. Yeah, everything everything is so much yeah, bigger, yeah. which was really cool. Um, and then again, went back to school <laughs> summer before my senior year. I asked uh, the new head groundskeeper at the Aces, Eric had left, soccer had come in. Um, yeah. So we Holy had system. we were hosting a soccer team, a semi professional soccer team, and AAA baseball in the Whew. same stadium, and they had a new head groundskeeper, and I was their seasonal assistant got there it. under Joe, and kind of got to see the soccer baseball yeah combo, which was a lot again a whole new experience. So same stadium, different head groundskeeper, different way he runs things, a whole new team involved, yeah. and learned a ton that summer. Then graduated, actually um, got a job at Northern Arizona University as their uh, facilities manager. Um, 
did the dumb girl thing out of college and followed a boy. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, love Flagstaff. There. Flagstaff is a gorgeous town. Oh, yeah. Beautiful mountain town in Arizona. But uh, job wasn't for me. Person wasn't for I was me. Sound like a boy wasn't for you either, but that's okay. <laughs> that, yeah, definitely not. And um, Joe Hill, who was at the Aces for my that last seasonal assistantship, um, had a full time position open, and he was like, "It's yours if you want it." Wow. And it was right about the time I was trying to leave, and I was like, "Things work out exactly how they're supposed to," and it was just a sign. And so uh, went back. Uh, well, let me ask a question. Yeah, okay. Just take a break. Take a deep breath. Let me, let me have my question. <laughs> so. Obviously, you started young, mm -hmm. you know, um, if, if you were to give advice, I mean, we have viewers and listeners, I'm sure of all age, age demographics, age groups. Mm -hmm. If you were to give advice to a young high schooler who says, yeah, I, I, this is a field that I might be interested in. What's some one, two, three points that you would give to this young uh, wannabe who wants to get into this market? Um, I, my biggest piece of advice and I give it to everybody because it happened to me is the answer is always no until you ask. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's a big one because if I wouldn't have reached out to the Diamondbacks, I would not be here. So yeah. like, you never know what the answer is going to be. You just have to ask. Yeah. Um, so reaching out to industry professionals, it's so easy now on social media to send somebody a message. Everybody's emails on every company website. Yep. Like you can reach out to so many industry professionals and ask questions. You don't even have to look for necessarily an internship or a job or just have somebody to talk to like those avenues are open and i didn't necessarily have that when i yeah. was coming up into it i had to literally go to the mlb website to yeah. get in contact with somebody do, do you find that the industry leaders are open to mentoring and giving oh, advice yeah. and it's not a closed community it's a very open community very open i wow. mean <clears throat> our industry in general is just very open to sharing tips and tricks and secrets with each other. And we're so open to getting more people into it just because labor has been so short. And like, we're just trying to get as many people to know about sports field management as a career option as possible. And so we are willing to take and field all your questions. Yeah, that's great. So talk about an, another those fantastic advice for somebody who is uh, wanting to get into it. Talk to us about the transition from like no baseball, softball field experience to now all of a sudden you're into it. What barriers did you face there? And what are some recommendations you have for people who say, what? Well, yeah, I've been to a major league game. I love looking at the field. I'm curious about that, but I've never played ball before. Yeah, it's you don't know till you know kind of thing. So yeah. like I didn't know any better. Like I walked out there not knowing a dang thing, but like people will take you under their wing and really show you yeah. and are happy to take the time to show you most of the time. Um, I think the biggest thing you can do is just put yourself out there. Yeah. I mean, we're at a point in this industry where there are no barriers for the kids coming up into this. Like we were finally at career highs for salaries. Like assistants are making twice what I was making. Wow. As an, That's my, fantastic. my That's first great. job out of college. I mean, there's so many jobs open. Like you have your pick of any city, any job, everybody's hiring type thing, yeah. which I didn't have either. So we're really hitting a shift where unfortunately the, the professionals in it are needing help and yeah. there's just not a lot of it. So, so let me, let me reverse yeah. a question. So, that's the advice, a positive advice. Mm -hmm. What would be, and there's no such thing, I guess, as negative, but what would be a warning? I mean, <clears throat> don't do this. Is yes. If you're, a, if you're a young and you want to get into this field, here's some things you need to know that don't do or, yeah, you know, yeah. this, be prepared for this. I mean, what are, what are some of the other advice? Well, you mentioned way? it earlier. Like this is a labor of love. Uh, yeah. You really have to be passionate and yeah. really love coming into the stadium every day. You have to really love the science behind what we do every day because there it's not a nine to five. Yeah. You don't get to just yeah. come clock in and clock out and have your weekends off. That does not exist. So in this leaning world. on a rake is not a good idea. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd rather lean on it than rake it, it's probably not for you, right? No, this is a, it is a labor industry, but it's more than that. I mean, there's a whole science behind it and sure. an art behind it and yeah. a passion behind it. And it's all of those things. Yeah together that make it what it is yeah. and that's why you see these amazing fields on mlb network or on sundays for nfl games like there's a lot of passion and love that goes behind it and if you truly don't love it yeah. you're gonna hate it oh, i think that's well, that's great advice yeah. right there that's a good that's a negative advice 
Right. Yeah, if, it's fantastic. If, if you don't love it, don't pursue it because it's sure. going to eat you up. Yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, it, I mean, even I, who who absolutely love my job, I can't see myself doing anything else. There are days where, like, I question my life decisions. <laughs> and I'm like, is this really what I right. decided to do? Yeah. And then you have the next day you come in and everything is quiet and teams out of town and you yeah. just do a quick spray and you get to see the grass just start glowing in the sun and you can leave that day or whatever yeah. it is. And so it looks to me, I, I know HR, we can't ask things about age. I mean, I understand that, but you <laughs> look like you're still young. So it looks like you did this in quick order. I mean, it looks like you moved up the career path quickly. What, what, what brought you some of that success that you were able to, to achieve this level at such a young age? Honestly, this surprised me just as much as everybody else. <laughs> okay. um, so in 2020, I was going into my second year as a full-time assistant, and we had played one soccer game. The world shut down, and then my boss left in a matter of a week. Oh, wow. It was a whirlwind. And I, was, I love – Joe Hill is probably my number one mentor and a great guy who I looked up to entirely. Yeah. And – to have him leave, I was just like heartbroken because I wasn't ready to take over. Like yeah. he was my safety net. That's what I felt like I needed. Yeah. And he felt like I was ready. And so like his confidence kind of built my confidence in my own self. What a yeah. great word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously having 2020 where we didn't end up having a season kind of got to dip my toes into the water of being a head groundskeeper without yeah the pressures yeah, completely makes sense i mean i was the only one besides 24-hour security in the stadium every day so i was able to start testing my all of my management practices fertilizing keeping things neat and tidy until we could play um before getting the full season thrown on me so yeah. that was i guess a huge advantage i had over maybe somebody coming up in it who had the same situation but then has to play a season in that year their boss leaves like i i could not imagine playing yeah. a season after <laughs> that would have been brutal <laughs> yeah well and i don't don't want to miss the opportunity here i mean we we're talking about your success earlier in your career and not only have you uh kind of risen to the responsibility of hedge ground keeper but you and your team actually won an extraordinary honor right yes i mean <laughs> sfma a couple months ago Greater Nevada Field was named the 2022 Professional Baseball Field wow. of the Year. I mean, that's, that's remarkable. Pretty, that's incredible. That's a coveted that's award. Good. And here you are a couple years into <clears throat> you're leading the team and, and you get the award. How did that feel? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I when Leah called me with SFMA, I mean, I cried yeah. just because like the emotions of like all those hours, all that hard work that you put in those yeah. late nights, like it was all worth it. Yeah. And to be validated by my peers because it's voted on by your peers. And that's what really matters to me. Like there is an MILB groundskeeper of the year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like there's other factors that get factored into that, sure. unfortunately, where like this award is strictly based on like safety, playability, aesthetics, like your maintenance program. And then they all balance that on like how much staff you have, which is for me isn't a lot. So like mm -hmm. to see that what little we have time for and like every detail that we do put into it was noticed yeah and was noticed by industry professionals who i look up to i mean i could have i was just a puddle for yeah. a while there and then <laughs> yeah, i called I everybody i knew i yeah. called everybody i knew and i was like guess what, guess what? that's great i went to the store i bought champagne and me and my roommate popped some champagne that <laughs> night and it was just a an unbelievable feeling yeah. like of relief that like I've made it. Yeah. Yeah. And that you've been seen. Yes. I mean, everybody wants to be seen for their effort. Well, absolutely. Right? Well, because like said, it's not a nine to five. Like yeah. this is like your guts going into this so mm. many hours. Well, this industry is, we say it a lot. It's a thankless industry. Yeah. Like you, a lot of what we do is behind the scenes sure. and not a lot of people see what we do. Right. Like our front office comes in every morning and the field's ready. Yeah. At yeah. noon when they come in and I'm like, well, I've been here for four hours right, and right, right. you guys are just showing up. You missed all the exciting part. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah. to have other professionals who know what it takes, yeah. recognize. Yeah. It was it was a really that's, intense well, feeling. Congratulations. Thank that's, you. That's awesome. Huge yeah. deal. Yeah. Huge deal. Yeah. All right. So, Leah, you, you mentioned very briefly 
staffing issues. Yeah. And there isn't, I mean, I own a business. <laughs> Matt's in charge of hiring and firing yeah. for, for ABI, not firing. You don't fire. You redirect. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell if he's patronizing me or not right now. <laughs> no, but you know, this is something you've done for years. We yeah. know what the labor shortage is. It's brutal. Yeah. How How is baseball and softball handling that when it comes to groundskeepers? I mean, it's got to be tough. It's it's been hard. Uh, my first season, I did not have an intern. I did not have a seasonal. It was myself and my full time assistant wow. during the days, and it was just us doing all the mowing, all the clay packing, all the infield Ugh. prep, all the BP setup, Holy and then cow. we would have um, a game day crew come in and help us for drags during the game and such. But yeah, I went through a full season with just two people, and it was hard. Sheesh. I would not recommend. <laughs> and then last year, I was able to get an intern, and I was able to get a seasonal. Um, also again, learning curve because my intern was going for a turf degree and mm -hmm. was trying to learn my seasonal, however, um, had done some groundskeeping at his college, but wasn't a professional or didn't have a degree and was just trying to get more experience in it. And I needed help and I was going to take anybody and everybody yeah. and it took him a minute. I will say the learning curve was a long one for mm -hmm. him, but sure. After about halfway through the season, he really found a passion for it and he oh. really showed up on time and loved coming into the ballpark every day and grew in that aspect and now wants to come back again. So that's great. I right feel on. like for some people, once you get into it and you realize how much you love it, it they're locked in. And sometimes it's not for you and that's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a hard job. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. It is a long but if you love to be at the ballpark every day, if that's your office and you don't yeah. want to sit at a desk, I have a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a formal invitation I right think there. We just so may have some applicants. Scott, here's my two weeks notice. Let's, oh, go, yeah. let's, go, let's go work on a field. <laughs> All right. So you're short staffed. How did you balance? I mean, you talk about long hours, but there are only so many hours in a day. Facts. <laughs> I, I push those hours of the day. Yeah. I think what helps is having at least the one staff I had was great yeah. um my full-time assistant is still my full-time assistant going into our third year um he's phenomenal as well as um having a fleet of equipment that helps a ton yeah. um just because you can't do everything by hand all of the time so thankfully when we had soccer we were able to buy a lot more equipment to help with sure. the field yeah. conversions yeah. so we doubled our workmen's um got a new mower you okay, do have an ABI, go. and I love my ABI. That multi tool yeah. saves us so much time. Yeah. And like being able to, and it's such an easy machine to learn. So having an assistant who's never done field maintenance before, has never even driven a, driven, driven, driven. Huh? Same thing. We're, yeah. We're there. Um, English isn't my first language. <laughs> <laughs> um, has never even drove a SAM Pro to be able to teach him how to use an ABI. It's so user friendly. So, and then teaching them all the attachments, what's for what, what does where. Yeah, It's a simple process and it really doesn't take any more time than us doing it by hand. So having the full fleet of equipment is a, a time saver. It makes sense. It's, a, it's an extra person. So you talked about the the small staff, how equipment helps. The Let's go back to kind of the training and education of the staff. Because I heard you say that some of the staff you've got, you had to do the training yourself. Uh, one staff member does have some uh, kind of formal education in turf grass management. How how imperative is that for someone who wants to get into the industry? I mean, you, you again, had the shadow. You saw the degree. You questioned whether or not you wanted the degree. And then you jumped into it. But yeah. what if there's someone who already has a two year or four year degree and now they're like, wait, man, I'm in a dead end job that I don't want. I'm in Flagstaff and I don't want to be in Flagstaff. <laughs> what do I do next? This sounds cool. Like you sold me, Leah. This sounds like something I want to do with my life. Is it too late for me to jump into it? Do I need to go back and get classroom education in order to be successful? No, never too late. Um, my full time assistant when I was when I just got my promotion right after or it's 2021 now. Um, I'm able to hire on an assistant yeah. getting ready for our first season post COVID. And I was reaching out to everybody. A lot of people weren't leaving because things were in a weird transition. Um, I, it was a small world, how I found my assistant and he has a master's in like sports leadership or something. He was a oh, right college on. baseball coach okay. for multiple years. And he had worked on the field slightly um, that he was at just because they were low division, division two baseball 
don't have groundskeepers. Yeah. So coaches did everything and he enjoyed it, but didn't know a lot about it and was getting ready to leave. And I wanted somebody who wanted to be there every day. Yeah. Like who wants to show up early, who doesn't complain, who puts in the work, who enjoys baseball. And I can teach you the turf stuff. Yeah. And I found that in my assistant, Max. Shout out, Max. He is phenomenal. And he has the willingness to learn. And I think that's the key piece Okay, is like he didn't know, but he wasn't opposed to knowing. Yeah. Because there are some people who are like, I just need some extra money and I just am going to come in and right. play around on a baseball field and get paid to watch baseball. Right. Like that's all fun and great. But I need somebody who actually, if I'm not there and I need to spray one day, I need somebody who understands. So yep. slowly and unfortunately, we've had two busy seasons. So like. It's not always like I can't always explain the why we're doing what we're doing. Just yeah. can you please get this done and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Um, but it's been a process and thankfully he's stuck with me. And now he's slowly learning why we use this time at this time and why we use this fertilizer and why we space this out six weeks and what different herbicides and fungicides do and the different frac codes and the science behind it is the the degree aspect. And he yeah. is now looking at getting a two year degree online All from right. Penn State just because the science behind it intrigues him too. Got it. As much as the work did. So sometimes it just takes that like they just need to get their foot in the door and enjoy being there. And then sometimes that spark for the science behind it will sure. will ignite. Well, let's say I'm one of your employees. I I love being on the field. I don't have any knowledge. You've got all the knowledge, but obviously you're busy. Yeah. Are there other resources besides going back to college? I mean, are there online classes? Does the SFMA have classes that I could take? I mean, can I self-educate in some of this? Yeah, and he's done a really good job about being a self-motivator. And he did take the SFMA mm -hmm. has a certification um, that you can take a couple weeks classes and, right and just kind of get a basic okay. knowledge of like the different turf grass types, different weed types that you'll see different mm -hmm. um cultural practices, things like right, that. Sure, right. So he's taken initiative. Also, they put out those webinars all the time and mm -hmm. they have them on the website. He has a membership. So he has access to the full catalog of of any of the SFMA conference talks. So when we talk about like a couple of weeks ago, we went over micronutrients and like why we spray micro packages and certain times of the year when it's a little bit hotter and stressed out and then there's a webinar link that he can go watch and maybe listen to somebody else explain it because maybe I'm not explaining it the right way or he wants to learn more about it. Sure. So I think because he is a self-starter, that helps a ton. Um, but there is so much out there. I think we could do a little bit better yeah. about maybe some other certifications that aren't degrees for people. But Beacon puts out a really good uh, like skin management course. Dura mm -hmm. Edge does a really good job of posting educational videos. ABI posts a lot of educational videos. And I think it's simple things like that because you don't learn. I never learned skin management in infield if people are listening. And I'm <laughs> yeah, saying skin right. and they're confused. We were tracking. We, we got we, you. We okay. what you <laughs> well, the infield skin. I never that's not a class in college. Yeah. So I have a bachelor's of science, but I couldn't rake dirt to save my life. So that's where the internships come in. So it's yep. like 50% science and the degree part of it for me. And 50% of it was those internships and job experience because you don't learn to pack clay in the classroom. You don't learn this moisture management. Yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that crazy? I mean, you don't you, learn you how to string and paint the lines. Like if you're a soccer or football field, like those things aren't taught in the classroom. Those are right. taught in real life. So you have to kind of balance both. When it sounds like you had a phenomenal mentor in Joe that helped you learn those things, right? Yes. And so let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, because you listed off uh, some things that you're looking for and you're looking for a crew, right? And just that it sounds like it's grit, it's resilience, it's work ethic, mm -hmm. uh, it's responsibility, personal accountability. Why don't you give us uh, some of the wisdom that you've picked up in, in this transition to leadership? Because I'm sure there are a number of listeners, viewers right now that maybe they're also new to leading a team. Maybe they have in internships, uh, they've worked on fields and similar to your path. Now they find themselves in a leadership position and maybe they're a little bit stressed, a little bit nervous. What tips do you have? What have you learned in your first couple of years of leading a team? I will be honest, that first year was a struggle. Yeah. It was like jumping into a wave pool and just getting crashed on every day. Yeah. Uh, it felt like because I was now not only managing myself, but an assistant and a game part-time crew and managing up. I think people forget about that aspect of it is a lot harder 
than almost managing down most of the time for me at least because yeah. I'm trying to communicate word. to my vice presidents. I'm trying to communicate to the GMs, the managers, the coaches, uh, everybody above me. Yeah. Right. And I understand. Unfortunately, my age can sometimes be a hindrance to me. And um, they're like, she's 25. She doesn't know what she's talking about. (laughs) Like, that's fine. But I have the degree. I do know what I'm talking about. And I hate to throw that around. But like, you know how to take care of the degree and the experience. And like, I've done a really good job to get to this point. And so explaining that to people. But I had to do a lot of self-reflecting my first year. Um, Because it was just survival that first year. And the second year was, okay, like, let's start treading water instead of just, like, keeping our head above it. Well, I appreciate that you're willing to, like, to be humble enough and candid candid enough to admit that. Oh, no, I went and bought management books after my first year. I I went out and was just, like, how first-time manager books. Like, start teaching me how to talk to different personalities because everybody's different. How do I manage up? How do I manage down? Who needs what from me? And when I did that self-reflection and I I really dove into that aspect of it, the second year went so much better because yeah. I was able to communicate when things weren't going well. Like, tell me why you're struggling. Yeah. Is it something I'm not doing right? Am I not explaining something right? Do you need a day off? Yeah. Like, are you just stressed out? Like, what can I do to get a better you out of you? Oh, that's great. And like, that's where I was struggling the first year a little bit. First year, we just didn't have time, unfortunately, with two people. (laughs) Last year with four people, we had a little bit more leeway to like really give people some breaks and really dive into like, how can I get the best out of somebody? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And now going into this year, I'm hoping to start swimming instead of just treading water and start I got to know, though, what's your list, though? Like you said, you went out and looked at some management books. And I, I, I know I, that you I, deeply respect the self-education. Like that's I, I all do. Like, I yeah. deeply respect self. I mean, that's why I, I, Self-learners. I jumped Absolutely. up almost out of my seat when she said that because. <laughs> it's the go-getter. Yeah. It's a go-getter. I, I love go-getter. So what's your list then? Like top, like number one, number two, number three book. Like are there a couple of resources, a couple of books? You're like this one for a new leader, new manager. This is what you recommend. Um, There was Making of a Manager, which was a really good one. Yeah. Um, super simple. Just some quick how to manage both up and down yeah. and then there was a uh, personality traits book and it's uh, i'm putting you on the spot i know sorry I about know. that it's okay <laughs> it's like people are idiots or something it's something it's it was a catchy title let's just get right to it <laughs> it was like people are idiots yeah. and it's like all the different personality types and like how to cool. work with each personality type and like i had so many notes and highlighters and dog ears in that book yeah of like oh this is my assistant this is my president this is our gm this is so that i knew like when i was having a reactive moment with them where that was coming from because Mm -hmm. it's not necessarily like what happened what went wrong as much it is is like a trigger from something bad that had happened at a prior job for them and they're taking it out on you unfortunately (laughs) you just have to be the the calm Uh, i learned that a lot from both my i worked at north dakota state all four years um in their grounds department um and Tom, shout out Tom and Joe, who were very calm bosses I had. They were mm. very calm leaders. And when things went wrong, like they were probably internally panicking, but right. they never expressed it to the crew. Right on. And so everything remained like it was okay. Yeah. And then we got the problem solved because when you start spiraling and the crew starts spiraling, oh yeah, it can go downhill so fast. Yep. Yeah. Man, I just, I just learned something. I learned that you guys do like to manage. I never heard the term manage up. Oh, really? Yeah. So you manage me. <laughs> you, you are you you're have, always you working have, to maneuver me. And we just revealed all of me. my secrets. Just yeah, so you know. I just she also revealed now. that there's a book that's a title of idiots and your name is in it. Just <laughs> so you know, that's, that's what I heard her say right there. <laughs> gotcha. So, Leah, we've covered a lot of ground so far. Uh, let's. <laughs> let, no pun intended. Oh, my mm. goodness. <laughs> I did not try to do that. But it was funny. <laughs> Set him up as the problem. No, I know, right? So <laughs> let's zoom Let's zoom out a little bit from some really practical advice uh, to people looking to get into the industry and new leaders in the industry since you've got some great experience there. Um, let's look at sports field management as a whole. I mean, SFMA wasn't that long ago. It's where you got that prestigious award for your field, you and your team. Um, the what are some what are some trends what's something new in the industry when it comes to being a professional uh, groundskeeper a sports field manager what's what's something you're excited about i mean obviously the technology piece is a huge one um 
ABI advancing, uh, autonomous mowers, yeah. um, the grow lights, everything has progressed tenfold. And just the f- yeah. 10 years like I've been doing this, it's an amazing es- escalation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Words. Yeah. Good, good word. <laughs> um, yeah. That we've seen in such a short time. I also think the the thing I'm the most excited about is seeing young people jumping into it a lot sooner. Yeah. Um, like I was at the Little League Softball World Series um in August this year in, mm-hmm. in Greenville, North Carolina, and we had a variety of veterans um in the industry and as well as we had two girls from Texas A&M, we had a girl from Virginia Tech, and we had a high school student. So like we wow. had five generations of female sports field managers right at, on. at an all-female crew for this Little League Softball World Series. And like I would have killed for that experience in high school. Sure. Yeah. I would have killed to be on that crew. And this young girl is getting like to jump right into it. And she got to be a part of everything. She did everything on the field. Same with the college girls. If I could have had that experience in college so young, yeah. I mean, I don't, I can't say the past. I don't have any regrets, but yeah. it would have yeah. changed a lot of things and could have progressed things a lot faster. So, like seeing young people like jumping in on opportunities so soon yeah. and say for, um, there's a lot of like the ACC championship games or the SEC championship games, Super Bowl. There's a lot of young sports field managers involved in those. Like there's a lot of college kids out on those fields prepping those fields that like I never had that experience. And a lot of kids I went to college with never had that experience in my generation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so to see how much we're like embracing our youth and like really bringing them in so early, I think is going to shoot this industry into the right direction. I feel like we started to like regress and I think we're finally back in a progression phase. Right on. That's great. And I love, I love to hear from you that there's so many opportunities and it sounds like it's just making, making young professionals or students aware of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, you put out a comment on someone's just like their field page randomly, like no specific email address. And two days later you get a response. Like that's Remarkable. That's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. to know that those opportunities are there, um, that's exciting to think through. How can organizations like the SFMA and other professional organizations help people interested in the sports industries? How help them get connected? Yeah. It's a it's a new thing. I am a millennial, so I'm a social media person, right. and I enjoy getting to throw those things out there for because yeah. that's what the young people are on. I. We're not looking for jobs in the classifieds anymore. It's yeah. not. It's yeah, not right. happening. <laughs> no so, more yellow pages. No more yeah, yellow pages. Right. Yeah. I got a yellow pages in the mail the did other day. Really? I didn't know it still existed. I did not know that it still existed. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, I bet not. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it for safekeeping and just in case. <laughs> like, what is this thing? Thing, you know, but like we used to do, we used to sit our kids on it in the chairs. Like so like historical document. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. So like using those tools, it's a tool. I know a lot of. Older generations are scared to use the social media. Turf Twitter is quite the... Turf Twitter? It's quite the thing. Mm. I don't know if you've heard, seen, been a part of it, but it is quite the little networking. Mm, And you get to see and talk to all kinds of industry professionals and get tips and tricks. And as well as young people get to see job postings and they get to see the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes, I guess. So you can get to see and meet your boss before you even work there. So you know, like... Oh, she's really fun. I'm going to go work for her. (laughs) Right there. (laughs) You can come work for me. I'm super fun. (laughs) Um, Or like just to see an inside look at what you're applying to, as well as getting to see those opportunities, like posting like, hey, we're looking for young girls to work Lily Softball World Series this year. Hey, like ACC championship games coming up. We need help. And like for those kids to see that on Twitter and we have a quick response and then get to go like the avenue has been shortcutted so fast for these kids Got it. Yeah. Yeah. which honestly sounds like a great reason why like coaches all over the country like if you if you are working with students and if you care about the industry growing and you want to connect your students uh to opportunities it sounds like a great reason to get to be a part of these organizations or find those uh the social media networks wherever they are to get i have connected. a lot of high school and college coaches that follow me on twitter and like i get reached out to all the time about either them needing help taking care of their That's field awesome. which i'm always happy to give advice and help especially those people who don't necessarily have the big resources or have the big budgets to like do what they can with what they have. 
Um, cause I have been that person that has to do with what they can with what they <laughs> what have. They yeah. So I've been there, but as well as like, I have a student who's interested in this. Can she reach out I to you? It. Can he reach out to you? And I'm like, absolutely. That's and if awesome. they are looking more towards football, I know somebody yeah. at this way. Are you looking at a, a college level? I know somebody here. Like we have such a tight group. I know somebody you're one degree away from knowing somebody who could get you where you want to go. Yeah, That's the it. best part of this industry. Yeah. And as long as you're all open, it becomes a very small network. Oh, Even yeah. though there's millions of fields, yeah. it, it can actually feel like a small network of mm -hmm. people if you're all open and willing to share. And oh, yeah. And I think great. for most most part, all sports field managers are like yeah. that. We are all welcoming and happy to share advice and and. Well, it's because you're all passionate it. about it. You, yeah. you yeah. can't do Love this it. job without passion. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So the new season dried up on us. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> right, what, what you looking forward to? What's happening this year that's got you excited? I mean, obviously you're full of passion. Well, so especially after hitting that. Yeah. Hitting such a after the big success, award. success, the big yeah. award this year. What's the next year hold? Uh, like I mentioned, the first year I felt like my head was just above water, like yeah. sucking water every once in a while and just struggling to get through that first season. Then last year, I felt like we were treading water. We were making progress. I wasn't drowning, but mm -hmm. we weren't getting where I wanted to go, I guess. I feel like this year, we're going to start swimming. We're going to start making progress. We're going to start having more days off. We can relax more. We have a routine. Um, being able to teach a new intern, being able to teach a new seasonal. Um, I'm excited for that part of it. I'm also super excited. Uh the Reno Aces, the team themselves, just won the PCL, our, our league. Yeah, awesome. So okay. they're PCL champs. I feel the league yeah. field of the year yeah, champs. Huge I mean, deal. So the whole city should be celebrating. Yeah. Is what I'm hearing. So I have <laughs> lots of trophies up in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have one last question for you. So you've got the award. The, what, what was the name of the award? Uh, it's a professional baseball field of the year. Okay. So you won that. What are you going to do this year to even make you feel better? I mean, you've already gotten to the top. I know. Right? I, don't, I mean, on it, as long as I can keep steady. And okay. Yeah. Keep it going. Uh, could go back to back. Who knows? It could yeah. get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to keep giving that safe, playable surface yeah. that our players love, the cool patterns that our fans love, and um, give a nice experience for my staff just because it is it is hard, long hours, and I just want them to enjoy it as much as yeah. I do. Yeah, that's great. Right on. Well, Leah, you are fun. Yes. And anybody would be really lucky to get to so work fun. with you. You're yeah. so fun. So, fun. <laughs> so if you're looking for an internship, if you're, <laughs> call Leah. Yeah. Sounds like jump on Turf Twitter and find her and, yeah. and check it out. So thank you so much for being willing to share, really, though, so much of your story. Yeah. And again, I appreciate your humility. I appreciate your candor that you're willing to talk about how you're just kind of treading water in the beginning. And that's a big deal for, I mean, young professionals to hear that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's hard. I think hard we work. make it look, I think people make it look easy again. Like yeah. you see on social media, like, oh, the Chiefs field looks amazing or Baltimore looks gorgeous right. or New York Yankees field is on point. Like you see all the beauty of it, but you don't see the hard work behind it. And you don't see it. the yeah. struggle that you had to get to these places. I had my, one of my college best friends texted me when I won that uh, baseball field the field of the year award and she was like if they only knew how many times you cried in my apartment <laughs> <laughs> before you got that award and i was like oh i know like yeah. there is a struggle behind that and it's okay to show that because yeah. it's not always perfect right. and it takes you a long time to get to that quote unquote perfect yeah. and, and, if, and if you're getting into the industry yeah. you need to know what you're getting into exactly yeah. right because you're if you okay. feel like you if you feel like you have to be perfect because yeah. people see the perfect field yeah. and someone says well i could never do that well, then you're less likely to jump in. But if yeah. they hear your story and yeah. hear you talk about struggle, it openly. It's a struggle and it's okay to like, I I have no shame in showing my yeah. struggle. I have yeah. on my desk, when I was an intern, I was aerating and I kept it from, or I was a seasonal. I kept it. It's a tine that went straight through a sprinkler head, like yeah. dead yeah. center yeah. of the sprinkler head. I don't know how I could have gotten it more perfect on that sprinkler head. And it sits on my desk as like a trophy to like everybody messes up. Yep. It's okay. That. That's like, great you still get to where you're supposed to be and you just learn a lesson. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Well, we're actually going to get to talk more about those kind of trophies when it comes to the field work. Uh, so if you're listening or if you're watching either one, remember that you can do either one. If you want to find us on podcast mediums or find us on YouTube for the videos. Uh, we, this is not our last episode with uh, Leah. Yeah, this, one more this coming. Season. Yeah. So uh, I'm this so is fun. You give me time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually get to talk in our next show with Leah about a renovation work yeah. uh, because like you said a soccer team is now using your field as well right and that's fairly recent in the past couple of years and so uh, when it comes to renovating a field for multiple purposes and still somehow getting a trophy in the midst of it lee's going to have a lot of great advice for us and that'll be next time so see you then